Hi everyone, welcome back to this week's talk. A lot of you have asked me about vaccine-induced liver injury in the past. Now this topic has always been on my mind, and I think it is now the right time to take a deep dive into this topic and acknowledge this problem. Throughout the vaccine rollout period, there have been cases of presumed autoimmune hepatitis or AIH reported that were associated with the COVID-19 vaccine because they were observed shortly after either the first or second dose of the vaccine. But AIH was not observed in both the Pfizer and Moderna Phase Three clinical trials. So, like many rare side effects, there was a debate on the causality and association. But in late April 2022, a new peer-reviewed case report was published in the Journal of Hepatology, titled "SARS-CoV-2 Vaccine Can Elicit a CD8 T-Cell Dominant Hepatitis." Now, this is a very reputable journal for liver-related studies. This study appeared to have presented a compelling case showing the Pfizer mRNA vaccine induced a different subtype of autoimmune hepatitis or inflammation of the liver that was caused by CD8 cytotoxic T cells. Let's first understand what typical autoimmune hepatitis is. Classical spontaneous autoimmune hepatitis, or AIH, is typically associated with an increased level of self-attacking antibodies that can be detected in the blood, and high levels of plasma cells infiltrating the liver tissue, and a damage pattern called interphase hepatitis. Here is a visual of interphase hepatitis. The liver tissue or lobules are arranged like a honeycomb, and the interface is where individual lobule connects. As a reference, new cases per year of spontaneous AIH are about one to two per one hundred thousand, and total cases per year are about thirty-one per a hundred thousand in the U.S. and as well as in Europe. So, what was the evidence showing vaccine-induced liver injury? In this case report, a 52-year-old male received two doses of the Pfizer mRNA vaccine and developed acute hepatitis after both doses. The first occurrence happened 10 days after the first dose. The patient's liver function test enzymes were significantly increased after the first dose. But the patient's doctor did not associate the first episode of acute hepatitis with the vaccine at that time. The patient also spontaneously recovered without any treatments. But unfortunately, the patient had liver injury symptoms again after the second dose. So there was more investigation after that, and the research team ruled out all other possible causes of hepatitis. And the patient also did not have any alcohol-related problems. Let's take a closer look at the liver function test lab values. According to the Mayo Clinic, the normal range of ALT is from 7 to 55 units per liter, and AST is from 8 to 48 units per liter. The patient has an ALT level near 2,000 units per liter and an AST level of near 1,000 units per liter. Other liver function indicators like total bilirubin. And gamma GT were also higher than normal. Now, these abnormal readings were discovered shortly after both doses of the vaccine. The liver biopsy showed that there were 5.3 times more immune cells inside the liver than normal. There were also significantly increased activated CD8 T cells specific for the spike protein in different regions of the liver. Just a quick reminder: CD8 T cells are killer T cells that destroy virally infected cells. But in this case, the CD8 T cells were causing liver injury. Normally, these activated CD8 T cells should be in the bloodstream and not infiltrating the liver. Now, previously, I had a series of short immunology videos. So, if you would like to learn more, please feel free to check those out after this video. 
Another note is that the biopsy was taken 27 days after the second vaccine dose, and they did not detect any vaccine-induced viral spike protein in the liver tissue. So, what was the outcome? The patient first received an oral steroid treatment, but the liver injury relapsed three to four weeks after that. The team then gave the patient a systemic steroid and another drug called ursodeoxycholic acid, and he quickly recovered after the second therapy. The author didn't know the exact mechanism of this liver injury, but noted this type of vaccine-induced hepatitis is different than other autoimmune hepatitis because others are primarily driven by antibodies, and they propose this could be a novel subtype of autoimmune hepatitis. Now, lastly, I would like to propose something for us to think about. We know COVID-19 can cause cardiovascular and liver injury. And last week, we looked at the association between heart attack and mRNA vaccine. And now we are also seeing clinical evidence of vaccine-induced liver injury. A recent systematic review also reported an uncommon association between the COVID-19 vaccine and autoimmune hepatitis. Even though it is very rare, perhaps it is time for the FDA or the CDC to update the list of rare side effects to make the public aware. The bottom line is that we always hear the benefit of the vaccine outweighs the risk, but at the same time, the public does not hear a lot of acknowledgement on rare but serious side effects other than myocarditis, pericarditis, and blood clot. I make this video is not to discourage people from taking the vaccine, but on the contrary, I'm making this video so that everyone watching this video can understand the very rare but existing risk of vaccine-induced liver injury, so that you are all informed and can make the correct decision for yourself. That is all for this week. Thank you again for all of your support. If you find this video useful or helpful, please like, comment, and share so that more people can discover it. Now, next week I'm going to switch gear back to the cholesterol topic and look at how cholesterol can affect our immune system and the risk of infection. If you'd like to learn more about it, please consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss the next update. Lastly, thank you very much again for watching this video, and I hope to see you next time. Please take care, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye.